And welcome back to another edition of the Weekly Geekly. As always, I'm your host, Lucian, the weirdo with a beardo. And with me today, I have a very special guest in the studio. My lovely wife, Anastasia. Is it special at this point? Yeah. I mean, at this point, you've been on a lot. That's true. But mm -hmm. to me, it's still special when you come on and we get to talk about something that we both geek out on. You're special to me. Thank you. Yes. I can be special sometimes. And that's for sure. No comment. No comment. <laughs> Uh, we are here today to talk about something that is super, uh, again, special to us. True. And something that has uh, been a bedrock for our relationship since we met. Yes. The reason we met. Yes. The reason we started talking. Fuck yeah. You know, so this was very important to us. We're talking about Metalocalypse Army of the Doomstar. We Finally, after 10 years of waiting, we get the conclusion that we all deserved to this franchise we indeed and not did. only did we get that we got a beautiful score to go with it and an amazing soundtrack it's perfect uh, rest assured we will be doing a full album review I know Dusty was excited to hop on that so he's like give oh, me yeah? a week to listen to it let me dig my teeth into this and really soak it up yeah and and he's gonna come to the table I think next week to record uh, an album review of that, but this is the movie review. Yes! You know we're gonna do some more Deathcast based off this stuff, if you're a Deathcast fan, uh -huh, but we're not so. talking about Deathcast today. Today we're just gonna talk about Army of the Doomstar, what it meant to us, our experience watching it, the things we noticed, the things that maybe we didn't notice the first time around. Uh, I think there's a lot of that for me. Yeah? Um, yeah. Well, we were watching it. We had the fan on, and it was like a box fan blowing, and I was like, I can't hear it's this hot. shit. It's hot. It was. It was really hot here the last couple days, so we were, like, trying to stay cool, but I was like, man, I, I gotta fucking rewatch this with captions. So I did. You took a nap. <laughs> yes. Let me tell the viewers, the listeners. So I was so fucking excited. August 22nd, that I woke up at 6, 6.30 in the morning. 6.30 in the goddamn morning. And I woke my wife up, my beautiful, lovely, gracious <laughs> wife, up at like 6.45, and I was like, Target opens at 7 a.m. I'm going to go get a copy of it. We're going to watch it. I'm going to get us McDonald's breakfast, because we're never up early enough for that. Ooh, egg with muffin. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to watch this shit. And she was like, all right, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, cool. So I went into Target. I went into Target, and I pretty much made them open up a box of it when they were like, we're going to stock it later. I was like, no, no, no. You harassed It's 7 a.m., and it's the day it comes out. I'm not going to wait for this. They were you walking gotta me into a copy. work. They were walking They were, like, waking up and drinking work. their coffee, and oh. they're like, someone's here already? And I was like, yep, door just opened. Can you get me a copy of this movie? And they're like, Metal Colocalypse? And I was like, no. <laughs> Metalocalypse, and it's called Army of the Doomstar. And he's like, all right. And then he was like asking somebody else. They went over and they went out and <laughs> opened a box and got one for me before they put it on the shelves. We went back. We went back, yeah. And I'm sure they were all like, oh, my God. it was in the wrong place. What, what yeah. movie was it? It was, <laughs> like it was a Fast and Furious complete bundle for $80. It was yeah, in was like, that spot. Oh and you were like, please God. tell me you didn't pay $80. I was like, no, it was like 25 bucks. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> That Target kind of sucks, I'm not going to lie. They have nothing. Yeah, their um, like, video section is terrible. I'm sorry, but like brick and mortar stores, before we get into this review, are just garbage nowadays. And like they expect you to like... If, like, I'm a fan of that. Of course I'm going to be out early for it. You know what I mean? I told the lady, I said, you're going to sell out of this pretty quick. She <laughs> was goes, what is it? Was the line big outside There was the no line. There was no yeah. line. Okay. <laughs> for a second, I did kind of wonder. I wonder how many other people are actually here for this movie at this time. But, like, <laughs> there wasn't. But, hey, there was only two copies when we went back. So I was like, yeah, maybe. Yeah, and the one is still sitting there. <laughs> yeah, maybe one is still there. But, no, it was just, it was a crazy experience. So we came home. Got McDonald's, came home, we watched the movie. Yes. And it was beautiful. You cried at the end. I did. Which I knew that was going to happen, because you cry at the end of the first season of Metalocalypse. Yes. I mean, like, going to the water always gets me. Yeah, that's true. And they did use that line in the movie. They used a lot of lines and references from the series, but it didn't feel like a Rise of the Skywalker. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> It didn't feel like just over fan service for sake of doing it. Like it felt like they had a plan for everything, and you can really tell that Brendan Small has had this plan since like the mid two thousands or something. Like he's had this planned out for a long ass time, and it showed 
in the story and it showed in the answers that it gave us to a lot of the questions we've had for 10 fucking years oh, right i'm sorry so, i'm just giggling why? because it's the rise of the skywalker and how many like star wars yeah. references okay are had and you're here? not the only person to say that there are a yeah. lot of like un- unknown it's, it's all of it star wars references to this unknown no, like they're known <laughs> Listen, there, there's like yeah. vague similarities that are very, no. very heavy when they hit the screen. Like, stop it. We'll get into it the more we talk about the movie, but anyway. I think we should give like a synopsis to like give a rundown. Go Warning: This is going to be a complete spoiler episode. This yeah. is the weekly geekly. We spoil shit. We don't do spoiler for your reviews. High five, babe. So this took takes place like. Uh, they don't really give a clear timeline, but we got with some of our death cast writers and we were like, let's estimate this. And they were thinking like six months to a year after the events of Requiem, mm. which I think is a pretty solid guess. Good idea. So it like picks up with a press conference and they're talking and they're all hyped and they're like new tour, new album. We're going to kick ass. But as soon as they go on stage, Nathan has PTSD. Uh, well, we see it a little bit beforehand, but he's got severe PTSD and like uh, paparazzi flashes and pyrotechnics like set it off. Yes. So he just has like a fucking panic attack and he's hospitalized for I exhaustion. Saw his butt. Yeah, you see his butt in his little <laughs> in his little gown. It's super funny. With that sweet but animation. As that soon they got as that on. happens, I like the transition they made with uh, like everyone explaining what's happening with the stock market and everything going on. Like just very death clock. Very well done. There was all these different symbols and meanings and like the hand and the fist and all this other stuff. And they did it really well. It was like a nice transition in between that and then picking back up at the church. Right. Like having that whole, that was very Brendan Small to have that animated transition with like black, white and red and all that. If I would have one criticism about (gasps) like the, A, (laughs) about like the animation, I felt like it's really flashy as in like yo if you have epilepsy please like don't be careful yeah <laughs> you know oh yeah and well that's a lot of their too stuff though much of it a little bit i i liked it i thought it kept it visually interesting and everything was perfectly timed to the music which of course i expect being a brendan small thing but it was I just it was refreshing that he could still pull that off. And while it was literally saying, can Nathan explosion still keep death clock to what it once was like, right, it was well, like, no, it was very like about. there was a lot of stuff in that animated part that was really like f- almost fourth wall breaking, you know. OK, so I was like really appreciative of that. And, and like the meaning behind all this stuff was like really cool. You could attach it to multiple things going on in this franchise, I guess. <laughs> Um, is it a franchise? Yeah, or? totally. Yes. But um, we it picks up at the Church of the Black Clock and like it's Ifnis's uh funeral. I always say his name wrong. But <laughs> what did you? I was like, what did it's you like say? Ifnis or something like that. <laughs> Ishnifnis or something. <laughs> no, seriously, Ishnifnis Metal. That's his name. And uh, oh. He's the former leader of the Church of the Black Clock, and he died in Requiem, so this is the funeral for him. So, again, actually, this can't be too long after the events. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, because, like, yeah, he just apologized at the funeral, right? Wait. Right. Wait. wait. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. So, th- <laughs> that's just kind of crazy. It's like, how, yes. how long would it take for a funeral to be held? You know, maybe like a couple of weeks, a month. So that's pretty crazy. But um, Nathan bursts in as like Charles, the new head of the clock, is giving Pickles like a lecture. He's like, I'm on Xanax. And that was like one of the funniest scenes to me. Like, I drank a lot of wine. I got sleepy. So I'm drinking coffee. I like that. Super fucked up on Xanax while they're all just like, we we pretty much see that Toki's regressed to the state of a child. Because of his trauma oh from being kidnapped and yeah. stabbed and abused, <laughs> it was, a, it was and that the Doomstar. Scene was fun. And no one really remembers like the events of Doomstar, but Nathan and kind mm-hmm. of Abigail. And we learn that because she comes to the church and Ab- after Nathan gets his talk about what they need to do, and she she he tries to propose to her and it's just ultra cringe. <gasps> and she's is. like, "Dude, I just kissed you because you saved my life. It doesn't mean we were together." And you were like, "Damn!" Because watching Requiem, we all made that assumption. 
They made right. this just grand epic scene at the end to Blazing Star where they it kiss, and I was like, oh, they're together. That's kind of cool. After all your girlfriends, Nathan. I know. Finally. I was so happy for Nathan. We mm. all thought he had a girlfriend finally, and then nope. She's like, that was just me being traumatized and thanking you and like you know all this shit. Then like, you would never see her again. Right. Like she ever. just like disappears. <laughs> Like that was it. Like, like that, her whole purpose was just I'm getting this record off and then like leaving, and she ch- she she couldn't leave, and then now she can. So thanks. That kind of fucks with Nathan, out, and like out. while he's like <laughs> chasing her down the street, pretty much or out the door, like the fans are all waiting, and he like he breaks up with the fans. Yeah, like that was intense. And that's we yeah. there. There was a lot of fucking uh, voice cameos in this, like Thundercat, Kirk and, Hammett, yeah, a couple other people, Scott oh, Ian. God. Yes. Um, just random ass people that you're like, oh, that's funny, and they were just like random people in the. They weren't like anybody super important, you know. Like, oh, excuse me, Kirk Hammett is important. Uh, yeah, but I mean, like, okay, I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, like in the in the story. Like, <coughs> but no, like Nathan breaks up with the fans and like freaks out, <coughs> and everyone's like, dude, what the fuck, like. <laughs> super confused are you okay yeah so charles tells nathan he pretty much <coughs> sorry oh my goodness Oof, i'm dying here hello <laughs> Oof, going through my own metalocalypse right now <gasps> ah, okay i don't know why that just reminded me of like the crown scene from game of thrones okay i've never seen that so thanks <laughs> appreciate you not my fault I didn't, it's Game of Thrones' Thrones is fault. Duke. Game of Thrones. Fr- it's Game of Thrones' fr- fault fr- fr- that I never watched Game of Thrones. <laughs> it sucks. Anyway. Uh, uh, no, it doesn't. Anyway. Ugh. Charles tells Nathan as the head of the Black Clock, you know, he's like, hey, you got to go see our song guru, who's someone that's in our clergy, and like write the song of salvation to stop the metalocalypse. And like defeat Salacia, and you're gonna face him eventually. You gotta like conquer your fear, you know. Like this shit's important. You gotta pay attention. Top that kind of tier, shit, man. And it was really cool. I like how they had a window pane, like a glass stained window pane, for everything that he was explaining. That was really nice. I was like, oh my god, aesthetically, it was just beautiful. And I agree. the new animation, forget it. Like they were showing different angles of these dudes that you've never seen. Like, <laughs> uh. I was very opposed to it because, like, I like season one where it's like very the like very stuff, like South Parky. Yeah. yeah, I like that, like as an animation standpoint. But damn, dude, sure, like this was incredible. It's just crazy to see something have that evolution. And like, yeah, I was telling you how I described it is like when Family Guy first did a 3D like zoom around moment, and you're like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Like they can do that? Like. That's exciting. So I, for me, it was really exciting to see different like 3D models of the dudes and like the action was really cool. Um, but they go to uh, what is it called? Deus Keep, which I tried to look up if that meant anything or what it was. I couldn't find anything on it. Where was it? It was just some like random in place like in, it was on in a, Spain. I don't know. Maybe Italy. Yeah. Oh no, it was Italy. You know why I think Italy? Because Brendan yeah, Small was like, exactly. "You got." I went so to Italy, Italy to write this. So I if you want me to do Italy. anything, you got to get me to go to Italy. Oh, God. It could have been Italy, but I don't know. But uh, we uh, we learned that like the Clocketeers at this point, like we assume that there's a lot of them still at Mord House, but a lot of them work for the church now, in different capacities, and some of them don't wear their uniforms. They wear like cloaks, just like robes. Oh yeah, but uh, that that was like a change I thought was really cool for mm. to just show the evolution, you know. Um, but uh, there's a lot of actual clocketeers like at Deus Keep helping the Guru, who they figure out immediately is Dick Nubbler. <laughs> and Dick Nubbler in this movie is different. He's like enlightened Dick Nubbler, so his eyes are like this weird yellowy orange. They're constantly chill until he gets really excited. They start going rainbow colors and shit. Tell him about how he fell down the stairs. Oh my God. So he immediately like fucking rings a gong and he's like, welcome to Deus Keep. I'm the song guru, essentially. Mm -hmm. Hits the gong. It falls off his straps and goes tumbling down the stairs. He grabs it and then just like wiggles all the way down the stairs as he's like holding on to the gong. And he's like, ah! (laughs) <laughs> like it's super funny and, he, and they're like god damn it it's dick nubbler and he's like yeah you guys have to like 
You called it. I did. Mm. You have to do all this shit <laughs> to write the song of salvation and save the world. <laughs> and the army of the Doomstar will help you. And the army of Doomstar was this collective of clocketeers that was just like nonstop training, essentially in the basement of this keep. Mm-hmm. Um, early on in the movie, we get kind of an update with General Crozier. He tries to like send a letter out to his family explaining that he's like helping for the end of the world and shit and got roped into it. And he's been possessed off and on by Celestia and like his mind is fucked. His mind's all fucked up and he gets caught doing that, which is really interesting to me uh, in the story, just because you don't really see it that way in the show. It was a little confusing. You're like, oh, okay, so he doesn't want to do this, I'm even like, though he did you? get controlled. Like, because he did seem kind of on board, even though he was investigating and like, I don't know. I had a whole nother opinion about his Crozier. mind has been wiped so, oh, so many, many times. times. That so dude is almost vegetable know. soup. Who knows? <clears throat> right. So he doesn't. <laughs> so Crozier's trying to like get away, and we learn that um, fucking Vader Orlog is still like the main dude for Celestia, and he's doing most of his bidding right now. Mm. Um, so one thing that happened in the movie that they don't describe, okay? Is the first scene where you see Vader Orlog, it's like in the snow, something falls into the atmosphere. They explain it was too far away, so it was going too fast and got fucked up in the atmosphere. Oh, yeah. Remember that? And he said, farewell, sister of the Krakish. Oh, yeah, you're like, like, hung up on this. Right, so right? because they don't explain it at all, it's just, just some stuff in this movie that they're like, you got to figure this out. Maybe they're just setting and That's a very Brendan later. Small thing to do. Yes. So I Audience. had my little research team look it up um, the other night in chat, mm. and we had surmised that it was a somehow a lake troll from another dimension that they were using the Doomstar portal to shoot down to earth but it was so the star was far wasn't close enough for the portal to not burn them up you know they like traveled too fast through the space did you just say star wars essentially (laughs) um there's a lot of magic in this i like that but uh i think that's what was trying what they were trying to do is like get a lake troll down there to another uh yeah to fight the whale or to fight off death clock or like mm. sub- get them to submit, you know this what I mean? Got really interesting. Really so like quickly. that's a theory right off the bat that the sister of Crackish was a possible intervention for Deathclock or the whale that they were going to use, but because the star was too far away, it burnt up in the atmosphere. I got to draw because they that. said the, the star was a portal, and that's how those spirits came through. So like, who knows what else could come through, and if they could have opened it another time beforehand? They did have all those like animations where it's like people coming through and like yeah yeah so that's a theory that oh. we have so far in the metalocalypse movie Huzzah. that was only like six minutes and nine seconds in if you're watching the movie <laughs> uh it's that little scene right there in the snow and if you do your research it's kind of what it feels like if you know what the doom star is at the end of the movie uh Continue. what it is uh so death clock is essentially like fucking <laughs> mentally karate training to write this song right with with Nubbler. So cute. He's like their fucking guru do, uh, dojo fucking sensei Mr. guy. Mr. Miyagi. Yeah. And they're just fucking up and Murderface is now getting possessed off and on by uh Celestia at night. Mm-hmm. He finds the army of the Doomstar for him and then he starts like by mentally. By the full moon light. By the full moon light. Ooh, and then yeah. he starts mentally antagonizing Nathan to make him more like agitated. And you're like, why does he want that? You don't really get it at first, right? He makes him want to hate himself. Yeah, he makes him just like full of hate, essentially. <gasps> and um, pokes and prods him and gets him in trouble with uh, Nubbler. So Nubbler just like fucking throws their whole breakfast and all their food on the floor and like freaks out on them and makes them do all these crazy ass things to accelerate their training (laughs) and they end up like he's like dude okay are you ready to write a song do you know who you're writing to because that was his assignment nathan's assignment was to pick someone to write to and write a message to them i've seen a side of nubbler that 
never seen before right i respect nubbler so much more now <laughs> um and no, so i just meant like when he flipped over and oh yeah like being there. he's on his feet he's like hey what about you babe oh, good luck. hey babe <laughs> what do you bring to this band hmm? <laughs> Like, I fucking love that shit. It's so funny. It was a lot of butts. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of butts. But, uh, no, it was, it was a pretty good, like, I love that setting. The keep, the whole, like, all the different oh, yeah. rooms in the keep were gorgeous. gorgeous yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They were really well done. And it was kind of like a different version of Mord House. It was like a different version of the church in Mord House where it was like less black metal and death metal and more just like it kind of reminded Viking me metal. of like when Batman goes and he like trains with Ra's al Ghul. Yeah, you know? it was yeah. that kind of shit. Exactly. He was the Ra's al Ghul. Yes. That's that's pretty cool. I like that. I tie um, that in there. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty fun. I, I liked. Yeah, you can take that shot. No, half it with you. Oh, no, I don't want half that. You can just drink it. I love you, though. I love you, but take the <laughs> shot. <laughs> take the shot! <laughs> Permission to take the shot, sir. Take the shot, soldier. Done. Nice. Taking a pink Whitney shot. Um, oh, God. <laughs> smell like something's burning. Oh, yeah, there's a candle going right there. God, uh -oh. I'm stupid. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is a it's just a fun movie, man. So they're learning oh, yeah. how to do the song of salvation. They know they're doing a live stream to the entire planet to do this song. And then all of a sudden, fucking uh okay, so no, there was one more thing that happens before they play this first song. So uh <laughs> Are you sure? Fucking <laughs> fucking um Nubbler's like, okay, the last level of your training and he just like lays out a bunch of stuff on the ground. He's like, drugs. <laughs> He's like, what? Oh, and he has him do yes. like this stuff that's sea weed of the sea. And I thought that was really funny. And he just like drinks this stuff and it's and he hallucinates essentially and talks to the water prophet, the giant whale. Can I do a throwback to a totally sweet, awesome Alabama liquid snake? Please? <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> I did because can, I did, I was um, like, but that was a drug a, for every season. Oh, for sure, and there had to be one for the movie. Mm -hmm. And Doomstar Requiem had like a bunch of them, so it, that just made sense. Yeah, there were mushrooms growing everywhere. Yeah, there's mushrooms growing out of the ground. We figured that's that. Later, okay, that's but later. okay, let's not jump ahead, babe. Okay. Uh, so he's doing the drugs. He's talking to the water prophet, the whale. She mentions that like what's going to happen next was meant to happen. It's you. You have to like end to begin. Essentially, you're like you have to live to die or die to live, kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was like, you have to decide to be the hand or the fist. Ooh. And the hand like destroys everything in front of it. The fist reaches out for other life. And he was just like, oh shit, what do I do? So. They're talking before they have to do this broadcast, and Nubbler's like, have you decided what you want to write about and who you're writing to? And he's like, dude, I don't know what to fucking do. I write songs about death. I write songs that people, when people want to hear a song about getting your guts liquefied by a weed whacker, they go to me. He was having a crisis. He was freaking out. Mm -hmm. So, like, he didn't know what to do. So they set up for this live stream for the entire planet right when the death lights start coming and the, and the doom stars getting close enough to like now be affected and they mm. immediately start setting up and Nathan right like two seconds before they go on he's like it's the wrong song yeah and then they start playing aortic desecration <laughs> sorry which was kind of insane um it was really cool to see, like, all the world damage, though. Like, it immediately just destroyed the world. I mean, their body count is, like... That's, like, the biggest death concert they've ever had. It took forever for someone to die, but... Once, once, then yeah. it happened, you notice and this. then everybody she goes, died. <laughs> the first person that died was that guy that got killed by the gong, and it was, like, 30 minutes into the movie. That's mm -hmm. crazy. And I was like, yeah, but there's going to be more. And then as soon as they played Aortic Desecration, the whole world ends. And we're like, oh, okay. We're we're like, done. we looked at each other like, okay, no, that makes sense. <laughs> like, I totally get that. Yeah. So, no, it was uh, it was really cool. I like how they did that kind of music part. And the score between the songs was so cool. It was like this 80s uh, Stranger Things kind of synth Agreed. wave. 
like late night movie horror movie kind of shit Very every time beautiful. murder face got possessed at night it felt like it was reminiscent of a um a more serious version of jonah hill getting possessed and this is the end <laughs> Like, he was just getting fucked by this demon dude, you know, like... That's really funny. (laughs) That's what it felt like. Oh, dear. So, that was pretty funny. They rung a death bell, like, every five minutes, (laughs) though, which is really strange. Ding, ding, ding. Um, If you don't know, ring your death bell. (laughs) No, I think uh, this was a really good movie. So, they... They start the Metalocalypse. It happens, right? I mean, Salacia's fucking watching it on monitors. Like, the whole world's ending. It's raining metal. It's raining fire and blood. And everything's dying off. That's good. And they're like, Mm -hmm. holy shit, we just fucking ended the world. And then right after they do that, they fucking... Like, they don't even get to finish the song. And then the tribunal is surrounding the island in helicopters and just fires on all of them. And that's when Nubbler does a very Luke Skywalker-esque... Yeah. Uh, sacrifice where he puts up a force field so death clocks protected as he gets fired upon by rocket launchers and, it's so and then he, he instantly just like disappears there's like no body or gore or anything he just disappears he's gone it's very star wars you're right um, yes doom star yeah star come on mark <laughs> hamill come mark on. hamill in multiple roles come on no uh it was very it was very that so mm-hmm. Murderface is like semi possessed at this point and he runs away and uh Death Clock is like hiding in a cave and the entire army of the Doomstar was killed mm. and they're like, What's going on? And like Squizgar is like freaking out, he's like having a, a panic attack and he's just like playing an air guitar. Yeah. And then Toki puts a guitar in his hand and puts the little tuner that they brought up earlier that on the so guitar. Cute. And I he love, writes down what he's playing. I love Toki and yeah. Squiz Guard. Their together. relationship in this was cute. I love it. it was really cool. Like they were really brothers in this, brother sister, I guess. <laughs> like well, as as Nubbler put it. Favorite sausage festival conversation yeah. first season. Yeah. Prime. Prime. Mm. <laughs> so he Squizgar's playing this this guitar because Toki put it in his hands and it comforts him while he's having a panic attack, and he puts the tuner on there and it spells out Dead Face, right? Yes. So <coughs> they're like, "Oh shit, Murder Face is gone. He's the traitor. We gotta fucking find him." And Crozier comes in and he's like, "Yo, yo, yo!" And they're like, "What the fuck? Why are you yo. here? You're like the <laughs> bad guy." And he's like, "No, no, no! I was possessed by Celestia, but as soon as I jumped out of my helicopter into the water, he uh." He uh, his hold was gone on Crozier when he hit the water because right. uh, he hates water. Mm-hmm. Um, like a cat. Like a cat. He's like a big old cat. Kitty. So <laughs> he's like, dudes, I don't want to be in the tribunal anymore. Help them out. I'll help you guys out. And you got to know that Murderface is still in there. It's not him. He's possessed. You got to help him. Mm. And uh, they run off to get Murderface and have to like pretty much kill him by drowning him and then bring him back to life. And yes. he like pukes out a bunch of yellow lightning and shit. It's really cool. Yellow lightning. Yeah. I like that. It's really cool. It's like a really cool bit of magic where he gets unpossessed, I guess. That animation was fantastic. Yeah. Like, ooh. Ooh. 100%. On par. Mm-hmm. I was really down for the animation on this like completely. Yeah. That was um, nice. So they get him back and he feels really bad. And something interesting that they were saying, because earlier they were like, what are your roles in the band? And everyone just said that his was to suck and he took it personally. And while he was being possessed, that kind of driv- drove him to be angry. Mm-hmm. And when he w- when he got Celestia out of him, he was like, I'm no better than Magnus. And, and Nathan goes, Magnus didn't give us a chance to forgive him. He was like selfish and fucking all this shit and like oh, didn't care about that. And then he's like, that. and he's like, you're like better than that. And blah, blah, blah. And they talked him back into it. And he's like, and they're like, dude, your role is to suck. He's like, it, you <laughs> suck. You balance us out. You make us even heavier. And like, you make us better That's because so you true. suck. And he's like, you can't even hear the bass. And Nathan goes, but you can feel it. You and I was like, damn, that's <laughs> fucking heavy, bro. Like, yes. this had a bunch of really good conclusions to a lot of different storylines and beats that they had set up throughout the season. And Murderface finally feeling accepted and part of the the group mm-hmm. was like making them stronger, and it made them stronger as a unit. You that know, is true. So I really like how that was in there. Um, 
God, this was just such a good fucking movie. Yeah. So they play they play the fucking song. We <laughs> start the metalocalypse. And then essentially get Celestia out of Murderface and it's on, right? They're like, how the fuck do we do any of this? We're in like, like a Mad Max kind of world. Yeah. Yeah, it's all fucked up. Like there's a bunch of people still left alive, but all the good people are dead. It's essentially the rapture. Mm-hmm. Uh, for oh, for Christians, yes. but for for metalheads, I'm sure a lot of them died, yeah. and I'm sure a lot of them lived. Who knows? I don't know the exact numbers, but a lot of people fucking died. <laughs> the world pretty much just ended. <laughs> like, um, yeah. like the Washington Monument traveled around the world and <gasps> killed other people. That was the most impossible. Yeah, fun so like that's thing how hardcore <laughs> the metalocalypse was. It's like unprecedented. I'm surprised the earth that's, is still in one piece at this point. That's silly. You silly. So Edgar Jomfru uh is still like in the picture. He's helping out Death Clock and earlier he was trying to show Nathan some plans, but Nathan was fucked up on Xanax and wine and like didn't want to hear it, right? So now he's like, "Yo, yo, yo. I have an idea." Uh, if you have the song of salvation, cause he kind of figured out what to write about. Um, he was like, what he would tell these people is to come back and maybe we can make it through this. If we fight together, that was kind of his thing. He's like, wait, that would make a good song of salvation. One thing I love about Nathan in this movie is he has such a clarity. Like even for things he said in the past, he's like, wait, that's what that means. Like he kind of like the gears in the clock, like that whole line in, uh, the Gears song, he was just like, oh, my God. Like, he understood it finally. That GED, it was really funny. he might have failed, but he passed. So armed with the with the Song of Salvation in mind, they were like, okay, Edgar, how do we fucking get the song out? And, like, he's like, yo, I have this way we can, like, broadcast to the entire world. It's this giant speaker system, PA system we have to set up. And it's strung with purple lights in, in, in the shape and fashion of the pentagram from the church of the black clock with like the wavy designs behind it all over the earth it was really cool and they had to like plug in these uh giant fucking quarter inch jacks with like dr- like huge oh, yeah. fucking <laughs> like star wars-esque fight tie fighter things wait what um <laughs> and nathan almost dies on his and like kind of like makes a huge confession to the band he's like apologizing to him and like does this whole thing and it's very sweet very heartfelt you're like oh nathan's kind of like growing up you know like nathan's a big boy right like it was and, nice and then and then and then and then what he puts that like dick in the- oh yeah he's like <laughs> he says something about his relationship with music and as he does he like puts the giant jack where his dick is and like thrusts inwards and goes Ugh! Yeah, and I'm just yeah. like, what the and fuck, then it bro? Turns on. And then it turns on. It was really funny. <laughs> so they play the song of salvation over the world. Mm. Um, <laughs> and uh, hello. hold on, I'm trying to think. I've seen this movie five times, and I should have watched it again before we did this. <laughs> um, they play the song of salvation, and like everyone's listening around the world, and it's like causing <laughs> hope to spread, and everyone's like, fuck yeah. Like this very good come together song. Right. It's a very simple song, but it's a very good song. A big intro for Nathan to talk through, and like everyone's like, "What the fuck?" And then this giant fucking but like it's too spaceship late. Uh, it's thing. But it's too late. Uh, well, not yet. Hold on. Oh, oh, okay. So if I'm remembering, they play the song first, and then Vader Orlog is like, "Shoot them down," mm-hmm. and they shoots them down. As the you got to keep in mind, the Doomstar is getting closer and closer. So he shoots them down, and they capture Death Clock, right? And yeah. and John Fru and Edgar kind of sneak away. Mm-hmm. So they capture Death Clock, and they put them uh, in this super condenser that they made, this giant machine in this ring where they, like, shackle them to it. Yeah. Uh, like, in the five points of a star, I would assume. It kind of reminded me of, like, the Avengers have, like, the giant, you know, thing up in the sky. Which Deathcock also did, so it kind of reminded me of that. What are you doing? 
Nothing. I'm just making sure this is still I, something popped up on my computer. Sorry. The correct but, answer uh, was being sexy. <laughs> being sexy. Yeah. Um. But yeah, they played the song "Salvation." Got shot down. Got captured. Got attached to the super condenser, mm-hmm. which we learned which was was what was pulling the Doom Star towards Earth, and Celestia made it. That was Project Falcon back. Right. Was to bring the the Doom Star to Earth and use Death Clock as essentially a battery to open up the Doom Star as a portal to another. Dimension. Dimension okay. and get these four souls back into Celestia so he can be completed and not the half man and be in his true form. So, like, mm. they needed Death Clock as a battery. They weren't gods. Everyone was like, they're gods. And it's like, no, they actually aren't. They're fuel. Uh, Death, oh Cl- Death Clock is a fuel to run this machine because they he needed a source of great power which happened to be death clock in the prophecy say one more metallica <laughs> give me fuel give me fire give me that which i desire yeah oh, that's what salacia was saying the entire time <laughs> in the background of metalocalypse the oh, show that. but uh oh god he, th- because of that they were given powers through the death lights or the death lights but but um that doesn't mean they themselves are gods and that's important in the story so um they like Edgar Jomfru and fucking Crozier blow up the fucking collider and free and death clocks freed and like running away. But you see that there's this like weird egg sack that's growing where Salacia was. And they and it, are besties at this point. Uh, who? John Fru and Yeah, they're like a buddy cop comedy. Yes. It's it's pretty funny. Their relationship grows from hatred Chips. to love like pretty quickly. <laughs> and you're like, I respect both of these guys now by the end of it, but um mm-hmm. <clears throat> rest in peace, Edgar Jomfru. Woo. Woo woo woo. Um, so he blows himself up to blow up the super, uh, super condenser, I think. Super collider? Super Super condenser. I think it's a super condenser. It is condenser. Yeah. Um, to bring it in and, uh, like blow it up. But it's too late because the half man is reunited with the great reuniting of his four souls that he was missing Mm -hmm. and becomes this giant, like, Int from Lord of the Rings mixed with an Attack on Titan Did thing, say int? like a tree int mixed with like a Lord of the Rings guy, guy like pyramid that. Pyramid head. Pyramid head meets Attack on Titan kind yeah. of thing. He's huge, and they're like, "What the fuck do we do?" He's like killing a bunch of people. At this point, the fucking fans show up, <gasps> and they're like, "We're gonna fucking help you out." And they like come in. A bunch of them get killed, but they're fighting the fucking tribunal. There's this giant clash. Uh, often sin fights um, uh, Vader Orlog Which was a Not really good down. fight Because you see him be like oh. a fucking beast Like a viking dude with a ponytail Playing that animation again It was great I We mean. never got to see his ponytail Because we never got to see him from behind Oof. in the animations Hey-o. So we're like oh my god He's fucking jacked And he's swinging around this big fucking hammer It's fucking sick Yeah. But uh, he got ki- he got shredded by a snowplow which I thought was very fun. <gasps> yeah. I posted oh that picture in Discord. I was like, rest in peace. <laughs> 100%. I have never seen animation gore like that That was before. nice. His face and shredded so well. Ugh. I was really into it. But yeah, um, yeah so there's no, this giant mean. battle. And then Death Clock kind of bands together with the Death Lights. And in a very uh, Thor and Love and Thunder way, spreads the Death Aww. Lights to... The fans by Nathan unclenches his fist and he goes from being the fist to the hand and yeah. it spreads to the fans. They they're like go into the waters and they shoot Salacia into the fucking water and he's like, "Don't you know a, only a god can kill a god?" Implying that they're not gods. Just saying, taking it out of the text. So if anyone wants to come at me, there you go. Squiz guards the god. At that moment, there's a huge fucking shake in the earth. And the water uh, god or the water prophet <gasps> comes up and fucking eats Salacia and brings him underwater. It's the giant whale. The whale. It was fucking dope, dude. And at the end, they're like freaking out because apparently it takes a lot out of them to use the death lights. And they're like, holy shit. Like, you are the army of the Doom Star to the fans. And like, this is crazy. Like, you guys fucking rule. And like, I it's cried. actually like a really cool moment to see them love their fans for the first time. It was like they've so never beautiful. loved their fans. They've always been so rich and powerful to be like, I don't need my fans. Fuck you. Like, I hate you. And the people loved it. I but now it. they like actually love their fans. And it's like the end of the world. So you kind of wonder like okay. how the f- I know you got goosebumps. <sighs> how the fuck are they going to continue with this as the end of the world? Like 
with Death Clock? Like, is Mordhouse gonna like let people in its doors and like be a civilization now? Like, what's happening? Mm-hmm. You know, like, mm-hmm. is that a whole new thing? Like, I I'd like to know that. You know, You'll like what comes that next? Opportunity. Well, yeah. Uh, we're meeting Brendan and Gene at the Death Clock show in Omaha. We got a uh, VIP meet and greet. It. So uh, that'll be cool. Um, I'm really excited to at least ask him like one or two questions, get a picture, you know, nothing crazy. Mm. Um, but yeah, it kind of makes me wonder like, where do they go from there? Like, where would you go from there? God, the fucking visuals in that last scene where they're in the clouds and in the world's like fucking ending kind of thing with Celacia and all that. They in the special features they show you that they use like a water tank with like ink, that was, giant ink drops and like yeah. light to make those fucking shots. So that that's all like kind of hand done animations uh, stuff from pictures. And mm-hmm. I was like, that is beautiful. Yeah, like you don't get that from anything else but Metalocalypse. It's its own brand and its own visual style and its own musical style. Everything from the animation to the effects like that, to the score, to the soundtrack, to the voices and the impressions and the humor, everything worked as one big thing and it was beautiful. Mm. And like, I appreciate it on a different level coming from someone that like makes death cast because you kind of have to think like, how am I going to make all these things sound good? Like, I'm layering, like, seven things at once. How's that going to not hurt your fucking ears? Because you're and then, amazing. And then, well, no, because yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, I obsess over sound. But I'm saying, like, that kind of stuff, I was thinking about that while I was watching the movie. Like, what's overwhelming me right now? Is there something that's taking place where it shouldn't take place in my brain? Like, mm-hmm. am I thinking about the background music more than I am what they're saying? Or, you know, like, you got to think about those things in the mix and how loud and, and how compressed things are. So, sure. So that's what I was thinking about the first time we were watching the movie. The second time I was washing the movie. The washing it? I was actually watching it and washing it because it was dirty. Uh, (laughs) But uh, (laughs) that was more the enjoyable one for me because I was like, okay, I can hear everything. The captions are on. Like, and from there, I, I've just been rewatching it to kind of get the feel of it. You know what I mean? Like what I get in the headspace of like what I want to do with death cast and like, how I could see the future going for this, this narrative, I guess. But man, it, just as a fan, a fucking I loved this. This was a perfect ending for the fans. I agree. Perfect. Like, I cried. Yeah. Like, and that we've been is, listening to Death Clock nonstop since this was, came out. Yeah. There's someone um, on the Metalocalypse form Facebook that. Um, said this perfectly. And it was like it was a love letter to fans, and I'm like, yes, that's that's yeah. what it is, and it's just like Brendan Small did that for that reason because you know it was gone for so long, and people wanted more. Yeah, and then he made this, and it was a love letter to fa- like, you know, I didn't say that. But that person right. on the form did so. Like I think, I think really that's fair. Nice. Yeah. I think this was an appreciation for everybody that's like held on for ten years, right? Like you, you know, are the army of the Doomsday. That was like a really cool moment. Yeah, like and, hearing oh Nathan God. Explosion say that. I bawled. Oh, I didn't bawl. Sorry. Jesus Christ! It was so good. I love all the designs of all everything that was made and new for this, like the different ships and things they were in. I love how Salacia's final form looked, even though it was confusing as fuck. I was like, "Who cares? It's the end. He's some giant thing that I can't comprehend. That makes sense." <laughs> I was like, that, "That actually probably makes sense because I had a vision. He was just in this armor and was bigger." At the <laughs> like, beginning, it kind of felt a little like. We're just gonna throw a bunch of like people in there, like Doctor Rock. So I didn't know why. Yeah, I was like, why is he here? Like, what? <laughs> why did that happen? But it was like the nothing from you know birthday episode. Yeah, death, death day. You know, so I don't know. That was a little weird for me. There was Twink a edit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Talk yeah, about that. Yeah, there was like a fucking <gasps> Avengers Endgame meetup of all the fucking characters oh. that you love in the fucking yes. uh, crowd that came to Sean be the army Kim. of the Doomstar. And I'm sure a lot of them died, honestly. 
Well, yeah, I mean, that's death clock, right? Like, that, a lot of them probably <laughs> died from getting killed, you know, by uh, the fucking tribunal or at least Salacia. It was like Jean-Pierre, yeah. Twink Lettuce, Fatty yeah. Ding Dong was in there. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. At least those three. And mm. then uh, somebody said Mashed Potato Johnson, but it wasn't Mashed Potato Johnson. But there's a couple that I thought could be in there, but I was like, I can't really tell. I think they only put in like two or three to be like these people are like the only ones that showed up. Maybe okay. or like it's implied <laughs> that more people did because no, you saw like familiar so fans, and then in the after crowd you saw like one or two familiar ones. And they know. were like shouting out like, ah. like there's that dude that's got one eye that's like in five different cartoons. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me what you did on Discord today about a pain weaver. Oh yeah, you've always wanted to see the pain waiver and I found it online finally, so I posted it in Discord and you were like, Yeah, fuck yeah. Because <laughs> like, you've always wanted to see what it would say and we finally have the document, so mm. that's pretty cool. Constantly doing weird shit in our Discord. If you guys want to be a part of it, message us anywhere you can message us, leave a comment, something, let us get a hold of you through Instagram, Facebook. Any of that shit under the Weekly Geekly hit us up and we'll get you a Discord invite link. You can join the community mm -hmm. where we have parties on Discord. We hang out. We play games. We stream stuff together. Uh, we also create content. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you want a creative, safe space, check out the Weekly Geekly Discord. Do it. It's fun. That's where we met and we're married. I love you. I love you. And I love Metalocalypse. This was a great fucking movie. Yes. Fucking super great. How many um, mermaiders would you give it out of five? <gasps> How many mermaiders? Yeah. Um, I would say three just because it's mermaid at three. Yeah. But um, I'm going to give it 20. Yeah. Out of 20 five? 20 mermaiders. That seems fair. Mermaiders. <laughs> that seems fair. Yeah. Um, we're going to get to talking about the album next episode on the Weekly Geekly, but I just wanted to like break this up into multiple things. Cause this is huge, man. This is more than just a new movie or a new album. This is like wrapping up something that has been taking a part of my brain for the last 10 years. You know what I mean? Tell me about it. And especially lately. thirty in the goddamn morning. <laughs> so... <laughs> So that that I kind of just wanted to get out early. I'm probably going to release this episode like right away. I really like doing this with you. Thank you. I like doing this with you too. We should do it more. My nose is touching the way you're. My nose is on your microphone. <laughs> People are going to hear that. They're going to be like, "What the fuck? <laughs> what is that? It's her fucking nose." Nope. Um, no, the, I, I would give it a uh, ten to twenty out of five. Do uh, what? I don't know. What did Mermaid? you just say? Ten to twenty out of five. Like between ten and twenty out of a rank of five. Math. Yeah. So get, get take that. Hey. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Yep. I think it was a perfect movie. I think for Metalocalypse fans, it was the perfect movie to send off the franchise it with. It did really settle a lot of scores for me. Yeah, and it's something that you could like throw in as a marathon and binge that at the end, and it would be really satisfying. Like you could just watch all the way through from season one to Army. And be completely satisfied with what happens. You know, there's nothing where you're like, oh, I feel like they didn't do this. The only complaint I would ever ha have is that they didn't, like, they killed off the army of the Doomstar, which is the Clock of Tears. And I was kind of mad about that. But I think it's nice about that because the army of the Doomstar is the fans. So the well, fans yeah, can I know become that. Clock of Tears. Truth. Coming from someone with a gear, hello. That's true. Yeah. There's a lot of ways that that whole shift of society could go. You know, like they could. That's why di I disband gears, or they could continue gears but give them different roles. Right. You know, like it would be different things or more than one role. Like Tom had that idea. I was like, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of things that are kind of left unanswered for me as far as where the world goes now after the Metalocalypse. Like, what happens? Mordhouse is safe. We've seen that multiple times. I know. There's, like, no damage to Mordhouse. I gotta finish that picture. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I know. I know you will. Yeah. But uh, that's, that's the kind of shit that keeps me up at night. I'm like, what does a world after D Army of the Doomstar look like? I like, guess. Uh... Mad Max, like I said earlier. Yeah. <laughs> like a, Crazy Mad Max civilization with metal. Or it's just like a utopia. Yeah. Speaking of. 
That's crazy. Mm. Yeah, quick shout out. Go watch Utopia on yes, Amazon Prime. It's a great show. Yes, please. but um, yeah, no this this was the perfect send off for me as a fan. Like it gave me everything I wanted, and I felt completely satisfied at the end of the movie. I'm glad. Like watched it four or five times that first day, <laughs> and every single time I noticed something different about the movie. A different line stuck out to me. A different weird animation made fun made sense <laughs> to me and was fun. Yeah, and uh. I love the artwork behind it. The artwork is just amazing. I agree. Um, same guy that does all the artwork, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. I don't but, think they changed. Uh, Sun no, Gu Kwan. So. Yeah, yeah. I think he did the movie too, because he was in the special effects or the the yeah. after credits video thing, mm-hmm. like, and he was, I think, showing off some designs for Celestia. That guy seems pretty cool. Apparently, he listens to Deathcast. Oh yeah, or has telling, listened yes. to Deathcast in in the past before and mm-hmm. said he digged it to somebody in the Discord and I was like, oh, that's fucking cool. So who knows? Yeah, so who knows? Uh, but that's really fucking cool. So I appreciate you, Sung Sungu Kwan, if you're listening. You uh, are. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for listening. Uh, appreciate it. And if you ever want to collab, I'd be down with something. Um, but yeah, I. Uh, I don't know. This uh, this does leave me with a lot of questions, you know, like about that kind what of stuff. What questions do you have? Like, what is the state of the world? Where do they go from here? Is Death Clock going to be treated like they're the kings of society now? Or are they going to be like looked at as the people that ended the world? Maybe. Like, what's going to happen? Maybe. Maybe. Brandon is just leaving that up to you. Right. Is Ooh. is up, <gasps> up to the fans because they're the army. Could you imagine yeah. if like, we went there and he was like, I'm waiting for you. He's like, I need to know what you think. I'd be like, oh my God. It's your time. I'd be like, oh my God. Like, Everyone I, dies. I'm done. <laughs> so you take it on. Could you Fuck no. If, he, if I was asked to do that, oh I, would, I would come up with five different stories. <gasps> That'd be cool. I think this would be really, really fun to see other people's fan fictions too, and what they think. I'm sure people I mean, will write not? stuff like that. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, but, it's such a powerful franchise. I, I couldn't see people getting away from it so soon just because it's over. And I think there's, you're going to see a lot more people finding out about Metalocalypse now because they're like curious about the movie. I'm sure the per, that there's a percentage of people that are just now watching the movie and have never seen any of Metalocalypse. Which is fine. Which is fine. But then when you go back, maybe you'll appreciate everything that came beforehand and you'll you'll be a new fan. You know, maybe you're not, yeah, you, you know. Sh- no, so honestly. So I think there's probably going to be an influx of people like that that are just like, oh, I watched this and I thought it was cool, but I don't know what it means. And like they go back and they fucking watch the originals and they're like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Like it's going to be cool to see new fucking Doomstar army people. I don't know, can I even say movie. Clocketeers anymore? Hence the movie now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. But no, I'm saying as someone that is an old school, like my preferred seasons are one and two. Yeah. And then, you know, three and four are great. Like, okay, sure. hamburger time for real. But Yeah. But this was that cherry on top Mm -hmm. you know and i my favorite season is two my favorite season is one and two (laughs) i love all of them but if i was asked to only watch one of them for a while it would probably be two just because there's so much that happens in two it's it's truly if death clock seasons were movies it's the sequel of it's it's truly a sequel of mm-hmm. the franchise because it's got twice as much stuff. It's twice as long, that kind of shit. Well, yeah, because like one, you're getting introduced to them, right? Yeah. So it's like, okay, this is fun. Animation is choppy, and I I kind of like that nitty gritty, I guess. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I like that. And then two comes with some guttural fucking songs right? yeah sorry for the f word oh ooh. <laughs> ooh. no yeah but i agree so and then there was a day where you said a cyborg slayer's kiss under the mistletoe and i was like yeah okay <laughs> I'll, do that. 
I That's wanna, funny. Yeah, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love the second soundtrack probably the best. I think it has the most iconic songs. Other than the first, don't get me wrong, Thunder Horse, uh, Awaken, songs that like that can, can never be taken away. Yeah. But you, you give me some Black Fire Upon Us. <gasps> Ooh, yes. You give me some fucking uh, Gears. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the Cyborg Slayers. You? Ooh, yay. You know, there's like so many breakout songs in the second album that weren't very simplistic. They were a little more complex. Right. And then by the third album, it was super complex. And now by the fourth album, we'll get into this more in the movie review or in the album review. But it's like it's just gotten more complex and more crazy as it's gone. And I think that's just the the goal with Metalocalypse and with Death Clock is as the longer it goes, the crazier it gets. Right. And now this is the magnum opus of how crazy it could get was the movie. Latin. And I like that. I think they portrayed it very well. The movie was well done. While you were saying that, I just realized that, like, you know, when I watched three and four and I had the criticism that it was very, like, it felt tired almost. And then it fell off, right? Because, you know, they canceled it. I guess. Whatever. And then it just brings back the fire. Yeah. For the movie because the fans, like, did that. So that's why I cried at the end because, like, that's a nice thing to have. Like, he realized that. Yeah. Like, and that's what he wanted and... God damn it, Brendan Small, you smart motherfucker. <laughs> Who's so smart. Very, very well played, sir. Uh, I'm going to ask it. you why. I'm going to okay. ask you why. That's the one question she wants to ask. I'm going to point in your face. <laughs> and I'm gonna Don't be do like, that. Why? Don't do that. <laughs> I would never. Point in man's I'm face. not going to do that. <laughs> damn it. But I'm saying. He's no. like, get her out of here. I'm like, God damn it, babe. <laughs> no. no, I wouldn't do that. To <laughs> no. I know. But I'm going to ask him politely. Excuse me, sir. Why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited to ask a couple questions and get and get this skinny. I um, I know who he is already. Yeah. I just want to know why. Right. I get it. I get it. Why? Thanks. Why? Yep. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> this this to me if if you don't know what metalocalypse is go check it out you need to get into this if you're a metalhead it's yeah. seriously for us I the just the movie it. is perfect work your way up to it trust me it's so worth going through the whole the whole franchise if you are a metalocalypse fan and you've seen everything rewatch doomstar requiem before you watch the movie it's True. kind of a nice refresher it's only 45 minutes long so it's not like a, a huge commitment but watch that before you watch the movie. Get yourself in the right headspace for what happens in the movie. And, dude, it's going to blow your fucking ass off. Meet the love of your life. <laughs> death clock. Just do it. You might. Who knows? Mm. Well, thank you guys for listening to another episode of the Weekly Geekly. I've been Clocketeer616. I said yes a lot, and I'm Clocketeer808. Have a good night, and keep it brutal.
Greetings, I'm Danny Filth of Cradle of Filth, and you're listening to the Weekly Geekly.